That's my great hope, yeah. It's important to have goals. <laughs> Why don't you drink a little bit more of that coffee? It becomes really important later. All right, I'll change. We'll take a cruise around. I'll go to the bathroom, maybe, and meet you. Why, why don't I come with you? That sounds really exciting. To the bathroom? Yeah, it's a, it's a real jungle in there. Oh, sure. It's going to be great. Odd. When a scientist refers to the bathroom as a jungle, that can't be good. Okay. I wanted to talk to you in here because... Your body's covered with lots of good bacteria, but the bathroom is really, it's like a petri dish for all kinds of bad bacteria. E. coli, staphylococcus, all sorts of things. Staphyl what? Staphylococcus and, and lots of other bacteria. For example, in that toilet bowl, mm -hmm. on average, there'd be about three, four, five hundred million individual bacterial cells. The thing about when you pee is that you get this splatter, this sort of fountain of life splattering back up from the, from the toilet. And when you poop, it's worse. It's kind of a fecal fountain. And gets all the way to Dave. <laughs> Lucky Dave. He has a front row seat for the first phase of my involvement in Doc's experiment, releasing all that coffee he gave me earlier. All right, well, well I'll, I'll leave you be. Okay. All right. This is you leaving me be? Yeah, I'm giving you some space. No pressure. Wait for it. You got a feather or something? Oh, that's disappointing. Here we go. Almost there. There we go. Not quite done. And we should do a show about my prostate. It could run all week. And I think we're good. I should not flush the toilet, correct? Leave the toilet lid up and we'll come back to this. To, to you, really... may, you may turn around, Doctor. And now let's go ahead and turn this light off. Let's go ahead and set the mood, shall we? Dr. Dunn busts out a black light to reveal just how many germs fly into the air when I flush. And therein lies the contradiction of the modern toilet. A contraption made to whisk germs away is actually spewing them right back at us. As you can see with these graphic enhancements, the mist from this bowl can spread Staphylococcus and E. coli up to 10 feet, landing on my razor or my toothbrush. On rare occasions, staph infections can lead to inflammation of the brain, while E. coli can damage your kidneys. Oh, that's not good. That could include some E. coli or, you know, whatever's flushing up out of that toilet. I'm glad I don't have to brush my teeth with that. <laughs> All day is going to be like this, basically? All day. So what would you do next, Mike, after going to the bathroom? Well, normally I'd brush my teeth and shave, but in this case, I suppose I could vomit. No, I, I think you should still brush your teeth. I'd go ahead and do it. Didn't we just demonstrate, though, that uh, there's E. coli on the toothbrush? Yeah, but the good news is that you have all sorts of defenses that help to control you from be getting sick from that E. coli. You've got all these bacteria in your body, on your body, that are helping you to fight it. You have an immune system. We all eat poop. It's just a matter of how much. Moderation. You don't need so much poop. Now, time to shave. Can't say I'm thrilled about it. When you shave, what you're really doing is breaking up little bits of skin. These abrasions open the door for our friends, E. coli and staff, to slide under your skin and enter your bloodstream. Electric shaver, anyone? So to recap, when you flush, shut the lid and keep your toiletries in your medicine cabinet, or at least far enough away from the frothy fountain of fecal filth.